about the Guild's history and creation, I visited the Harris Museum in Preston Town Centre. Those early traders who founded and gained entry to the merchants were known as members and would be identified as such by a list which was recorded and updated to ensure no false claims of trade. To gain a place on the members list, traders would have to appear in the public court. Swear loyalty to the mayor and to the guild merchants before their credentials were checked. And, if eligible, they would pay a small fee before being admitted or re as a member of the Guild Merchants, later known as the Burgess. It goes back to the 14th century and represents the occasion when the Burgesses of the borough renewed their rights to be a Burgess and the ordinances for the local government of the area were laid down. The Guild Court ceremony uh, involves a recital by me of the uh, various charters which empowered the council to hold the guild and that is followed by the existing burgesses and their successors, their sons and this time their daughters renewing their rights to be a burgess. That is followed by uh, what is called the Latin orations when a scholar from one of the local colleges makes a, a fairly small speech in Latin and the recorder of the borough responds again in Latin. On this occasion uh, there will then be a short adjournment and then there will be a religious service to end the ceremony. To find out more on why the Guild survived this particularly difficult point in its history, I visited the Harris Library, archived to many recordings and documents concerning the Guild. Traditionally, the traders and craftsmen held processions to demonstrate the power of the Guild. They wore colourful costumes and carried banners and emblems of their trade, which by the late 18th century became increasingly elaborate before the procession evolved into the modern floats and displays seen today. Examples of this process can be seen in the mass media coverages of the time, including these examples from the 1972 Preston Guild. The occasion was pressured by the great families of Lancashire, who, as patrons and members of the Guild, wore their finest clothes to the procession. But in 1835, the Corporation abolished the Guild's powers, meaning that the Guild's future was in jeopardy. But it was secured by public pressure and previous success. This footage from the 1992 Preston Guild shows how much the event has evolved and grown since its elitist days. Filled with parades and community groups, it has become common for young children, religious groups and more varied traders to take part. This has led to a large increase in the event's popularity, growing larger and larger crowds each year, all eager to take part and observe, which has allowed the Guild to continue and grow as it has done to this day.
1902, I was set on steps of uh, Grey Horse in Church Street. Uh, I were only, I were only in it by then. I was born in 1899. Uh, the first one was 1952. And I, I dead, dad made us all a stool to sit on to watch the processions, and I've still got mine at home. I think I'll sit on it now. <laughs> right, I've been mean, looking the last two, uh, fetching our little children. Now they're grown up, they'll be fetching their children. And I'm looking forward to this one, so yeah. And last. The last guild, we made underwear for um, the guild. It was Belmoral Laundry and they did all the uh, underwear and it had the crest on and crest and guild. I remember the first, first one I had in 1954. I was We seem to be getting better every time. I don't know what this one is going to be like. I don't know what this one is The economy of Preston is always greatly boosted by the arrival of the Guild. Businesses are normally encouraged to take part with sponsorship packages ranging from £10,000 to £250,000 given to them by the city as a way to boost productivity and involvement during the event. By increasing the flow of trade, Preston is able to gain vast promotion with the residents and incoming visitors, which is used to nationalise and globalise the city, bringing in further businesses and finance, as well as partnerships with various locations. Both small and large traders can benefit from Preston Guild, as the event itself started off as a showcase of all the trade in the city, a tradition which has continued to this day. It gives the people observing a spectacular event whilst also generating a much larger accommodation for trade. Businesses who do promote before and during the Guild will also be further helped by the upcoming London Olympics and the Queen's Diamond Jubilee, which, by giving the country an economical boost in tourism, will give them an even greater trade and economical benefits. 